Welcome to Family History Scrapbooking. I'm Audrey Reid, a film producer from Cambridge, and I'm passionate about capturing people's stories and memories on film or through scrapbooking. Scrapbooking is a creative way to preserve your family history in an album. For those of you who've already started researching your family history, I'm guessing you will have amassed a fair amount of information. But what are you going to do with all this information? And more importantly, what will your children or grandchildren do when they inherit your folder of research, your piles of photos and all the other precious documents you have? Will they be able to easily see how they link to your family? And will they know the stories behind the photos? Over the next 20 minutes I'm going to give you some ideas and hopefully by the end of the presentation I will have inspired some of you to want to start creating your first family history scrapbook. I'm going to cover a short history of scrapbooking look at what sort of materials to use, what to include, some themes, layout of pages and the importance of written stories. So what is scrapbooking? A very early form of scrapbooks were called commonplace books. These were popular in England in the 15th century. These books were a way to compile information that included quotations, letters and poems. Commonplace books were followed by friendship albums and these became popular in the 16th century. Friendship albums and school yearbooks gave girls in the 18th and 19th centuries a chance to show off their literary skills. And then from the late 1800s photos became available and these were incorporated into albums. Post-World War II saw the start of the collection mania and we collected everything from stamps, cigarette cards, postcards, holiday souvenirs, things like napkins, sweet wrappers. A holiday pastime for my family always included a large scrapbook with different colour pages, usually bought from Woolies. Mum would give us a glue pot and some scissors and we created scrapbooks using our favourite birthday cards or holiday mementos. Now scrapbooking has been very popular in the US for many years but only came to the UK about 15 years ago. But by 2003 there were already over 1600 companies supplying scrapbook products. So that's the brief history done. So let's have a look at what is included in a family history scrapbook. Now a scrapbook is a place to display your research, your family trees, documents, photos and your stories all in one place. It's a wonderful opportunity to get your children or grandchildren involved and for them to learn about their family history. And it's also a great way to open up conversation and reminisce with family members. How many times do we hear that phrase, I remember? When you hear the phrase, jot it down, it could be useful. Now at this point you may not be able to visualise what your scrapbook will look like or what it will contain. It may be a scrapbook showing the maternal or paternal side of the family. Or perhaps a collection of stories about each family member. Or it could be a tribute album to one particular relative. Or it may be a scrapbook that contains your entire family history. So now let's have a look at some of the scrapbooking materials available and the basics needed to make a start. The most important item is the album itself. Now this can be permanently bound or allow for the insertion of pages. I would recommend you buy an album that allows you to add pages as you go. You can buy smaller albums, concertina albums, but most modern scrapbooking is done largely on 12 by 12 pages. And it's very important to protect your pages with clear page protectors. These are made of plastic and they slip over the finished scrapbook page. And the basic materials include papers and card. When I saw my first selection box of papers, I was so excited. There are about 50 different designs from plain to pattern, single to double sided. The whole box cost me about 12 pounds and I'm still using some of these today. The card comes in a wonderful selection of bold and pastel colors. Now one of the key components of modern scrapbooking is the archival quality of the materials. You may have some of the older magnetic photo albums. Now these are the kind of papers that are not acid free and it causes damage to the photographs. They'll discolour and disintegrate much more quickly. So you should only use materials that are marked photo safe, acid and lignin free or archival quality. That's the technical stuff dealt with. If you need to know more then ask a scrapbook supplier. And besides the actual album papers and protectors you're going to need a few basics. Now I always think this is a great idea for a gift, say it's birthday or mother's day. A scrapbook a starter kit. 
So most of these things you already have at home. Things like scissors, cutting boards, paper trimmer, pens for journaling and some photo mount. There are various accessories available that can be used to decorate scrapbook pages. These are referred to as embellishments. If you are particularly creative, you can use embellishments to enhance your pages. Things like stickers, rub-ons, lace, fabric, beads, ribbon. You can also use stencil stamps and cutouts. This page shows an example of, this example here has something of everything. But each page doesn't have to be an artistic masterpiece, nor have lots of embellishments. Simple pages can be just as stunning and effective. In this example, there are three different papers of similar shades which have been chosen to enhance the photos. Now we're going to have a look at what to include in a family history scrapbook. The first decision to make is how many generations you want to include. And the next decision is how to organise them in a logical sequence. For example, my current scrapbook includes five generations from both sides of the family. And it starts with my great-great-grandparents, my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my parents, and then it ends with me. That's a total of 115 years from my great-great-grandfather, who was born in 1863, through to me getting married in 1978. The next scrapbook covers my adult life, my children, and the birth of my grandchildren. And now each of my grandchildren have their own scrapbook, which I started at birth. So two pages for each year of their life, documenting the most significant events, such as first day at school. I have to say these have been a lot easier to put together when they're only 10 years or so to cover, rather than 115 years of my ancestors. So once you've made the important first decision as to what sort of family history scrapbook you're going to create, let's look at what else can be included. Now the information you already have is a good place to start. A family tree chart, because this is a visual representation of who connects to who, and the perfect piece of information to start your scrapbook, because it will enable future generations to quickly see where they're going to fit into the family. Now you could separate your scrapbook by the different family tree charts for each family. This family tree shows both sides of my family over four generations. And in my scrapbook, I've used two family trees as suction pages to introduce each side of my family. This one shows my father's family, and as well as names, dates, and photos, I've added professions, where they lived, locations, children's names, burial locations, basically any information I have. And this family tree shows just two generations of my mother's family, with information on my grandparents, aunts, and uncles. And this is how I use that family tree on the page to introduce my grandparents. I also used a wonderful wedding photo I found and their diamond wedding party invite. This next family tree shows four generations on my granddad's father's side and five generations on his mother's side. Both sides of this family can be traced back to around 1775, but I don't have any other information. So I decided to dedicate one page to the family tree and I've put this alongside some carte de visites of my granddad's family that I inherited from his sister. My scrapbook is organised into three sections. It starts with my father's side of the family, then my mother's side of the family, and the last section is my parents' courtship, marriage, and the children. The next decision to make is what to include besides the family tree charts. These are some of the items I've included. From the top, my mother's birth certificate, a letter of recommendation for my dad's first job, age 14, two wage slips, a rare military bank note, and a death notice from the paper. It's a good idea to start your own resource file, and then you can squirrel away anything that could be useful, things like postcards, letters, brochures, recipes. Now, I mostly scan or photocopy my documents. On this page of my scrapbook, I use one of Sally's heritage papers, which fits the era perfectly. Dad was in the Merchant Navy, and this is a photo of the last ship he sailed on in World War II, his ID passes, his discharge certificates, and a couple of wage slips. Now, photos are obviously an important part of any scrapbook. But the photos that tell a story are the ones you should choose. And if possible, who's in the photo? The date or year it was taken? Where are they? And what was happening? What was the event? So, for example, the photo on the left is my grandparents on honey, honeymoon in Calais. Grandad got remarried, age 50, to his children's nanny. But this is a grandmother I knew. And we affectionately called her the nanny two sticks, one stick, no stick, on the account of the number of hip operations she'd had over the years. And this is a story about Dad's itchy collar and scratchy trousers, worn without any pants. 
He had to wear this outfit every Sunday. The book on the page was his prize for the best Sunday school attendance. He went 99 times in one year. How's that possible? Ah, he went twice each Sunday. But he missed three times in 1931 and he still got a prize for the best attendance. That's a nice story. Now you may be lucky to have inherited some silhouettes, paintings or carte de visites. I thoroughly recommend Jane Shrimpton's book, How to Get the Most from Family Pictures. This will help you date your pictures. If you're using original photos and documents, don't damage them by sticking anything on them. As I said, I prefer to scan my photos on a computer so that I can crop and enhance them. Then if I mess up, I can start again. There are lots of benefits of enlarging. The main one is you can see more detail. This photo shows my mum on her May Day celebration at school. But which one is her? The original photo was only about two inches by three inches. When I enlarged the photo, I could see that she'd written her name. So now I can clearly identify my mum in this photo. I found more information about my mother's mother and her siblings when I enlarged this photo of the gravestone. Now many certificates are going to be wider than a normal scrapbook page. So another benefit to scanning documents is that you can shrink them to fit the page. And this example shows the marriage certificate on my parents' wedding page. And you might want to do an introduction page. This is the one I've used for my album. Or maybe you'd like to have a contents page. You might like to have a dedication page. This page is dedicated to my dad's two deceased brothers, John who was killed in World War II in a direct bombing in Glasgow, and Ronald who died age 18 months from an epileptic fit. Sally Elf Butler was commissioned to design a set of heritage papers for history-focused scrapbookers, and what follows are four of her designs. Next look at choosing a theme. For example, for my mum's childhood page, I chose green and brown as a the theme to pick out the colours in the photos. And I used a circular cutter to enhance the photos. There are three different aspects to this theme. Firstly, the contrast of solid brown and green with a patterned background. And the two pages achieve continuity in this case because they do pick out similar colours. And if you have a dark photo, then you should think about using light background papers. Having chosen your theme, here are, here are three different ways that you could lay out your page. Whilst you're learning though, I suggest you keep it simple. You should always start with a focal point. You could sketch something out or you could create a PowerPoint document. This example includes spaces for photos and a very small area for the story. Now in scrapbooking, story writing is called journaling. And this layout shows more journaling and less photos. Each page should always include a title, photo and journaling. And this example shows from a layout to a finished page. If you get stuck for a layout idea, then go to scrapbooking site on the internet or look out for scrapbooking magazines and books. Now we're going to look at journaling. What distinguishes a scrapbook album from a photo album is the journaling. Now stories can be long or short, serious or funny, words cut from magazines or newspapers, handwritten or typed, it's really up to you. But there will be times when you simply run out of words. An excellent source of inspiration can be from song lyrics, quotes, letters or magazines. Or if you're not too sure of the story, you could just highlight snippets of information to make the important bits stand out. On this slide, you can see that I've picked out some dates and some words. So immediately your eyes are drawn to holiday, engaged, 1947. Or you could just do bullet points. Another idea, which I think is rather nice, is to write a letter. It's very personal and it adds intimacy to your pages. To give it authenticity, you could always end, end it with your signature. Now the value of journaling lies in the fact that it provides an account of family histories that may not otherwise be preserved. Journaling is one of the most important elements of any scrapbook. And the timeless formula of who, what, where, when and why works really well to get stories going. So who? Who are these people? What's the occasion? What happened at the event? When was it? Obviously giving dates will help place the photo in a proper context. And where? Background information can help paint a clearer picture. And why? Is there any special meaning to this photo? Why did you choose this one in particular? Now you may say, I don't have enough stuff. Or I have stories but no photos. Or I have photos but no stories. Don't worry. Once you start, you'll be surprised at how quickly your pages will flow. And just work on one page at a time. 
Remember they don't have to contain lots of information and photos. Now I hope I've inspired you to be the first person in your family to create a scrapbook. I feel very privileged to be the guardian of my family memories and my album is the most precious item I have to leave for my grandchildren. I know as the years go by that this will be more appreciated and that the future generations of my family will want to inherit the Reeds of Essex and Cambridge Family History Scrapbook. <laughs>